G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Sunday evening here in Australia and the market has bounced back again. We were down 3% yesterday, now we're up 2%. So, you know, two steps forward, one step back as they say, or maybe, you know, one step forward, two steps back at the moment. Who really knows? But the market cap is just above 1.3 trillion. So again, we're really waiting to kind of see what happens, you know, Monday. The Bitcoin chart is just on such a fine line at the moment. Again, you would have to think something big is going to come. I thought it might have been last week. I find it really hard to believe that it might not happen this week, that we're just going to have to break out of that kind of sideways movement that's getting ever so tight at the moment. But again, who knows, and it's never financial advice. Bitcoin dominance is up though, starting to grow. People are a little bit scared of the altcoins at the moment. It's not to say there's no gains made there, but people are definitely nervous because for sure with the altcoins, you know, you might make 7, 8, 10, 20% one day, but then, you know, two days later, you've lost almost all of those gains. Not always. Uh, some coins are still doing all right, but a lot of the time you've lost a majority of it, if not even gone into the red. Gas prices are down to 18, so not too bad. Uh, still not great. All right, let's have a look. Looks like a bit of a, of sea, a bit of a sea of green at the moment. So that's really good. But again, from what we've seen, you know, you see a little bit of green and then you see a little bit of red and then it's a little bit of green and then it's a little bit of red. Okay, ETH was at, you know, 2,100 not that long ago. Bitcoin was at 34,000, kind of 33,000, 32,000 not that long ago. And so all the coins are just generally struggling to recapture some of their highs. Again, they've pumped today, but tomorrow they could take a big, massive dump. Uh, and that is going to be really, really painful. But let's have a look. What's done the best in the last 24 hours? Because there's definitely uh, a bit of a sea of green going on at the moment. So what's done well? All right. Content Value Network, never heard of it. But they are up 17%, so nice for them. Doge, uh, nice pump. Telcoin, KuCoin, uh, Elrond, yeah. Look, a number of coins up a few percent, but that is all it is. They're still way down from where they've been definitely over the last few months. So proceed with caution with you know any coins really. Uh, again, never I never offer financial advice. I'm pretty confident in putting money into Bitcoin and Ethereum. Outside of that, it's not that I won't put any money into any of the altcoins on occasions, I will, but it's really just dabbling here and there. I'm putting the bulk of my money uh, into Bitcoin and Ethereum and having some stable coins sitting on the side just for if we do go lower. But in all fairness, I don't have a whole lot of stable coins on the side. Oh, sorry, yeah, a whole lot of stable coins on the sideline. I bought the dip a couple of weeks ago, and unfortunately, it, uh, it continued to dip. But I do always have money sort of coming in every fortnight. And again, a little kind of emergency stash sitting on the side for should they go lower. But that's where I'm sitting. All right, what about losses, though? Is there any losses? Because we can see there were some nice gains there, considering the market uh, in general is up 2%. Uh, okay, NEM down. So again, coins that generally pump sort of the day before are the ones that are down. So something will be up one day and then down the next day. And that's what you can see. But look, not too many losses, no double digit losses in the top 100, uh, really. And there's only a couple that are above five cent. And then we're into low single digit losses. And then we're really into, you know, the stable coins and things like that. So couple of nice gains there but again those gains are only making up for even bigger losses so pretty scary time in the market All right let's have a look at the bitcoin chart so this is where it is super interesting at the moment i mean just have a look at where bitcoin is at the moment <laughs> came down bounced right off the bottom of the bollinger band and now has bumped up ever so slightly and we are just barely kind of holding on to that bottom ranger of that $31,000 sort of $600 level. And again, but still holding uh, these kind of marks down here. So the $30,700-ish dollar level. If you went down into the smaller time frames, you could probably go a bit lower. And then, you know, we can look at this kind of mark back over here that we've set before. So what's that? At around about 30000 sort of 400 So we still haven't broke below there ever so tight on the rsi though things are starting to look a little bit more positive but you know again these are all lagging indicators they're not telling us what's coming they're telling us what's happened so we can see we kind of hit a bottom here and it's peaked up a little bit and that bottom 
is basically in line with this that was the bottom and so we've peaked up we've had a little bit of a bounce back from again that kind of 31 thousand two hundred ish dollar level now we can go down and have a look on the macd and it's the same thing we crossed over and now it's turned upwards and like it's maybe going to cross back over but that is just a maybe we're really going to have to wait and see you know what happens monday so again it's sunday you know afternoon sort of evening here in australia which means it's kind of sunday morning stateside time we're going to have to wait 24 hours to see what happens and whether the market opens positive or bearish uh you know and again maybe this could fall down and we go much lower that is still a possibility but again we are still above this trend line here so we broke out above it sort of tested it went below it got rejected from it a few times and now we've broken out a few times and we keep coming back and bouncing sort of off it so in a way it is sort of bullish but not over bullish unfortunately all right Again, there's not a whole lot going on in the market. You know, the charts have been the same, unfortunately, for quite some time. You know, we had a fake out and things like that, and now it just does look like we're going lower. I guess we'll find out, but for me, I think this has to break sometime next week. It just, yeah, it looks like it's got to pop. And, you know, again, we're all got our fingers crossed. It's going to be the to the upside, but we need to keep in mind it might be to the downside. All right, so some sort of bullish and bearish uh news stories all at the same time so negative sentiment on crypto twitter peaks again and history shows this could be bullish usually when so many people are bearish on it is when it turns bullish but have we seen enough pain at the moment that's the question god i hope we have it'd be nice because we've seen a fair bit already so here could bitcoin's price be actually primed for a price uptick despite the highly negative sentiment among the twitter community again based on usually when sentiment gets this low on twitter uh, it's a good chance it's going to pop to the upside but you know again have we seen enough price uh, retracement that is the ultimate question and look i don't know i hope we have like most people have i don't want to see my uh, portfolio get crushed by another 50 percent that won't be very nice but it is definitely possible and yeah it, it'll definitely hurt all right let's go over to crypto fear and greed index as we can see 19 so it's still low we're still in you know extreme fear now we definitely have been lower and that sort of says to me that considering where we are i think it really is mainly just long-term holders left now i don't think we have too much retail here at the moment not saying we don't have any but considering how grim sort of things look and the fear is only at 19 it's not you know again much lower but again look it doesn't go much lower than sort of uh 20 to 10 really 10 is what you sort of see at the, the absolute bottom we've only been there a couple of times and we got there not long ago so we're again hopeful that that means the bottom is in but yeah just got to proceed with caution that's all i can say and again that's not financial advice that's my personal opinion all right bank of england's deputy governor says cryptocurrencies aren't big enough to pose financial stability risk uh, i would have to agree with that i don't think they are either there's just not enough money in there at the moment it's all the big guys getting in when the prices are still super sort of low in comparison and when they're so early in the adoption curve and they know that bitcoin there's you know I don't know the exact numbers, but I know not longer it was less than 2% of the world were in cryptocurrencies. Now, we've probably grown a bit since then, but I couldn't imagine we're much more than maybe 5 and I think 10% would probably be pushing it. So that is still super early, hence why all the big guys are still happy to get in, and if the price goes lower, they're not going to worry too much. They haven't put all their eggs into one basket, and they know that this space is growing, and they have invested for the long term. And that's why I'm an investor rather than a trader. I do trade on occasions. I don't leverage trade. I just try and do some swing trading. But most of the time, I just invest. I simply buy and hold. And what I've worked out is that if I hold for long enough, generally, you know, up to about sort of three to four years, most projects, other than ones that were just crap and simply died off, will set a new all-time high again. Now, again, that's not all of them, though, but... At and when I say most, that's just the ones I've invested in. And that's because they were generally good projects that have stood the test of time. They were still here through the bear markets. Uh, you know, when everything sort of went, not belly up, but we had that last bear market. Uh, when we got to the bottom, I consolidated into uh, only a few projects. So Carbon Network, 
Bitcoin and Ethereum and XRP, and they're all still here. Now, XRP hasn't set a new all-time high yet, uh, but all the rest did, so yeah, I was happy with that. So he says here, they're not the size that they would cause financial stability, stability risk, and they're not connected deeply into the financial system. Uh, and it's true, the financial system's not using cryptocurrencies that much yet. They can definitely see it coming and they're making all the right moves for it to happen in the future, but it's not there yet. And I'll, again, I would completely agree with that. I don't think a collapse in the cryptocurrencies would do too much to the financial at the financial market at the moment. I think that will change in the future. And again, I don't think we're going to have a full collapse anyway. I just think we're going to have, you know, if there's more downside from here, it's just, a, you know, the healthy correction that's needed because the market was overheated. That's what happens in markets that are so, so small. You don't need that much money to come in to really pump the prices up a whole lot higher, higher sorry, because you are so early. All right, billionaire fund manager Jeffrey Gundlach convinced Bitcoin will fall below $23,000 and he says the US dollar is doomed. Definitely a possibility that Bitcoin goes below 23000 We don't have much support if we break under that kind of $27,000, $28,000 level. There is a little bit at twenty four, and the chances are it'll probably wick down even lower and maybe even come down close to our old all-time high of 20000 now, I'm not saying that's what will happen. It's just something we need to keep in mind. And technically, on the charts, that's definitely a possibility. I agree that the US dollar is in trouble a little bit, but I don't know if it's doomed because I actually think cryptocurrencies can help save the dollar uh, and give it longevity. I think what they will do is eventually, if you ever want to buy and, and sell something, you'll have to do it in your locally denominated money and then you can transfer whatever profits and things are like that lost back into Bitcoin. And that's where they'll get you with the taxes and things like that. And that is how Bitcoin will save the dollar for all the money around the world. Uh, again, you know, there's all that talk that maybe we're going to go to one world sort of currency. I think that's definitely possible. I don't think it's going to be Bitcoin. I think Bitcoin will always be the store of value. It is gold 2.0. We don't buy anything with gold anymore, and I don't think too many people are going to buy too much with Bitcoin, at least not in the future when it stabilizes. Uh, in between, you know, people will probably spend it on the price swings and things like that, but I don't see it being used as a form of currency. That's just me, though. So, I mean, we can go down here, and he says, in the near term, the dollar seems fine. In the longer term, the dollar is doomed. Again, not so sure about that. I mean, yes, they can kind of print it into near oblivion. Definitely a possibility. But I, again, I think cryptocurrencies will actually be something that will save the dollar. So that's just my thoughts. All right, things are heating up in the crypto space. So Aave founder hints at developing Twitter on Ethereum. So he's probably got a little bit of a bee in his bonnet. So Aave founder Stan, Stan, Stanny, Stani, sorry, uh, Kuchlikov told his 90,000 Twitter followers on Saturday that his protocol should build Twitter on Ethereum after Jack Dorsey said he was developing a new Bitcoin-centric financial service platform with striking similarities to Aave. So we talked about this, or at least I talked about this yesterday anyway, that Jack Dorsey is going to bring decentralized finance to Bitcoin and it seems like it's basically going to be sort of a copy of Aave. They're just going to bring it to the Bitcoin network. Uh, Stani hasn't been so happy with that. And so he's come out and said, well, maybe they'll start building a Twitter on Ethereum to uh, have a dig at Jack Dorsey. So, you know, keep your eyes peeled and sort of see what happens, you know, who will win that battle. I think, you know, there doesn't really need to be a battle there. And I don't think, you know, DeFi being built on Bitcoin uh, is really going to affect, excuse me, Aave too much. I think people are still going to use Aave. I don't think Ethereum's going anywhere. But again, I could be completely wrong. If Bitcoin could scale and they could scale faster than Ethereum, uh, and you know, not have you know too many sort of scaling issues, which you know, it's hard to say Ethereum's had scaling issues. It's more just they haven't scaled yet. So if Bitcoin suddenly came out and the Lightning Network could do it all you might see a lot of people move to Bitcoin. But the problem is you can't do proof of stake on Bitcoin. So that's what makes me think that not too many places would actually completely move over to uh, Bitcoin because there's no proof of stake there. Now, whether Bitcoin becomes proof of stake in the future or not, and again, that's probably a long, long way away if it ever happens. Yeah, I think Aave, you know, and Ethereum and things like that are probably here to stay uh, short of, you know, 
ETH 2.0 having major hiccups, you know. I guess we can handle it being, you know, put back a couple of weeks to a couple of months for a little while uh, to make sure that they get it right. But, you know, if they roll it out and it actually doesn't work and there's major faults and things like that, that's when I think you will probably see the collapse of uh, Ethereum and someone else will jump in and look, maybe it could be Bitcoin that takes over, but more than likely something like Cardano, uh, Solana, you know, uh, Cosmos, you know, there's a number of other platforms out there that could take over. Right, El Salvador. So they've made Bitcoin legal tender. So news outlet uh, El Faro reported that El Salvador's government was planning for its citizens to use a stable coin as well as Bitcoin. So we go down here and El Salvador's government could be planning to release a US dollar stable coin. Uh, in, and it's reported the currency would be issued by the central bank. So it's not the US central bank, it is the central bank of El Salvador. And it would be pegged to the value of the US dollar and backed by reserves of real US dollars. So there you go, maybe El Salvadorians will now have the option of you know, Bitcoin as a payment method, but also more than likely something that they will store value in. And then they'll also have a digital dollar that they can go around and use to buy all their things. And that would really put them at the kind of forefront of where the rest of the world would like to be. And they could simply be a test pilot for, you know, how well it all works and how well it doesn't work, you know, made to scale. Because obviously El Salvador it doesn't have that many people. But if Bitcoin and that whole network didn't work with, you know, only a few million people, then they know there would be work to be done to kind of roll it out to the rest of the world. But if it worked with very little, if no hiccups there, you might see some other countries start to move a lot faster on that sort of uh, front. All right. Jackson, Tennessee Mayor Scott Conger is sold on Bitcoin. So Scott Conger is a Bitcoin maximalist. After speaking with fellow Bitcoiner, Miami Mayor Fran Francis Suarez, Conger set up a blockchain, blockchain sorry, task force and Conger wants city employees to pay and hold Bitcoin. I like where his head's at, other than the Bitcoin maximalist part. I don't like that. I think there's plenty of room for other things to go on. Bitcoin cannot handle it all at the moment. So we need you know, other chains to do certain things. Bitcoin doesn't have smart contracts on it at the moment. And you know, again, whether it could scale, whether Lightning would be enough to look after the whole world, I think it's unlikely and they don't have you know, a whole lot of known second layer sort of solutions going on at the moment. Uh, again, other than kind of you know, Lightning and whether Lightning could handle it, I don't know. But I, I like the idea that you, know, you can be paid in Bitcoin. I don't know about you know getting all your money in bitcoin maybe a percentage in bitcoin so pay and hold bitcoin uh sorry to be paid in bitcoin and hold some bitcoin but he wants them to pay in bitcoin i just i'm not sure people are going to do that you know some will but eventually they'll all start to kick themselves in four years time when it's gone up you know maybe 5x or 10x from what they paid uh, and i think most people will simply hold it but we'll have to wait and see all right, a little bit of hopium for, you know, to finish it off because, you know, things aren't looking great. All right, here's some charts. So the 200 weekly moving average. Now, what we can see here is every time there was a peak in the market, have a look at it. It was, you know, it, it was an obvious peak. So that's a peak. That's a peak. We got a little peak there. We had a peak there. We had a peak there. It's hard to see behind these, but peaks, these are all proper peaks. Peak, peak. And look at this. It's just a rollover. We've never seen a rollover like that before. Never, ever, ever. Again, that's what makes me think we didn't get to a peak. It was not a peak. This is artificially sort of manipulated and things like that. And we still have the big bull run to come. Hence why I'm happy to just keep buying more. I don't think that we are in a bear market. Could be completely wrong. I've been wrong before, but I just don't see it based on the charts. Now, again, I'm not a charting analyst, so... But, you know, again, every chance that maybe we've got to come down to, you know, sort of, you know, 20 something thousand before we can start to make the next leg up. OK, the pure the pure multiplier. So same thing every time. Have a look. Peak, 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 peak. We have obvious peaks every single time. And then look what the pure does. It goes way up into the pink every time we get a, a peak, except for this time. And again, this wasn't quite the peak. This was a kind of mid-peak. Uh, and again, look at that. It was just a rollover of multiple peaks where we never get that any other time. It's obvious peaks every single time. 
that it has peaked. So that's why this market is different, and I think it really was uh, was and is being manipulated at the moment. I think the big players are doing everything they can to get in and ensure the market doesn't take off until they're ready. They want to make sure that they're going to get in on you know this massive amount of wealth and what is likely to be the new financial system. Now, again, please don't take that as financial advice. It is simply my personal opinion. Now, last but not least, the stock to flow model. So believe it uh, or don't believe it, it's up to you. But if you believe it, this is the most off course it's ever been. It's been right basically every other time. Now, again, he didn't make the stock to flow model till not that long ago. So, of course, the stock to flow model is going to follow in here. But look how far we are down. So if we were to come up here, it basically says Bitcoin should be right now at about 100,000. A little bit under 84,000 as of around about today and where are we 30,000 so basically you should be able to double triple your money almost by buying it at the moment if you believe in the stock to flow model and what we see is it generally goes above the stock to flow model so you know chances are we probably go to like a hundred and I don't know 10 120 130 maybe I'm not sure that we're gonna to get to the 200 and sort of three hundred thousand dollar range this cycle that people have spoke about but i definitely think we can go above 100,000 again 110 120 maybe 150 we'll have to wait and see i could be completely wrong and maybe maybe people just go absolutely you know bananas for it and start to you know really buy uh it up once it gets to that hundred plus thousand dollar level Again, depending on who you're listening to on YouTube, uh, there is chatter, you know, particularly from BitBoy, that he says the big institutions won't let it go much over 100,000. They're going to pull the pin on it there. Whether they can do that or not, because again, if everyone just starts jumping on board, they simply might not be able to have the leverage to do that. So we'll wait and see. Hence why I'm more, in, uh, more an investor uh, than a trader. I'm not really trying to trade it. I'm happy for it to go all the way to the top and then come all the way to the bottom. Uh, I won't be buying too much of it when it's in price discovery. I'll always be waiting to buy things when they have retraced, you know, a good 30 to 40% of the total price as opposed to, you know, just a, you know, maybe a quick sort of downturn. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. A little bit of a gain, which is good. Let's hope it can hold and is the start of a new trend. And I'll see you next time.